In the name of God who gives us growth, God who strengthens us when we fail, and God who inspires us to start again. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Grey's Anatomy is one of those television shows that I can pretty much watch any time over and over. Certainly the moment-to-moment -moment action is the kind of thing that keeps us coming back week after week. The drama and the suspense of life and death, and the crisis and resolution, the, re the relationships that are constantly growing and evolving and faltering and dissolving. There's a degree to which this show is only a slightly elevated form of a trashy soap opera. But I think part of its staying power, the show now is in its 18th season, or just finished its 18th season, and soon the 19th season will begin. And part of why it's worked so well for so long is that it does take some important steps beyond just being a trashy soap opera. Aside from the relationships and their drama, a big part of what Grey's Anatomy is about is learning and growing. It's about a group of people growing from baby surgeons just out of school into mature expressions of the medical profession that see nuance and meaning that their earlier selves never could have imagined. And it's about that as a never-ending cycle. It's not just about the crop of new interns that we meet in the first episode, but about the mentors who trained them and how they were trained, and the students that they raise up, and even about watching their students become teachers. When the show begins, though, the interns are learning. Almost everything is about learning processes, learning steps and tasks that need to be perfected to reach their goals. Almost uh, these processes and the reality of learning them point almost from the beginning to the bigger learning about themselves that will eventually come through. But the focus at the beginning is on the processes. I thought about this week when encountering once again this familiar dichotomy between Mary and Martha. Jesus is visiting, and the two respond in very different ways. Mary sits at the feet of Jesus, soaking up his wisdom and his teaching. Martha scurries around, doing the work of hosting. As the evangelist put it, she was distracted by many tasks. I think we've all been there, both as Mary and as Martha. I remember when this pandemic first began and the world was shifting so quickly from what we'd always known, the way we'd always done things, to this new reality that we didn't yet understand. I found myself in retrospect, having been focused almost solely on tasks, many tasks. If you'd asked me what it, if you'd asked me when it was all new, I probably would have told you that I was having a hard time sitting at the feet of Jesus, because there were so many tasks to get done. But just as true as that, and maybe even more true. The world was in such turmoil that I found myself leaning on the tasks. I couldn't wrap my mind around worshiping God when I was physically separated from the people I'd been called to serve. I didn't know how to do this ministry without seeing your faces and feeling your energy. There was a lot about all this technology that helped to bring us together that I didn't know too. But the difference was, I didn't know how to learn that. I knew how to break it down into simple, manageable tasks. 
and the task helps me to feel grounded when the earth seemed a slurry beneath me. Being a Martha helped me to survive the initial traumas of pandemic. So I hesitate to sit in judgment of Martha as the failure in this story where Mary is the icon. For one, we need to get the tasks done. Someone has to bake the bread. Someone has to connect the cables. Someone has to balance the books. But also, there are times when the tasks are all that we can wrap our minds around. But like the young interns in Grey's Anatomy, eventually we tend to learn that the tasks rarely turn out to be the ultimate goals that we might have once thought they were. What I started to learn through learning to live stream worship and building and developing systems to do it was about more than just the tasks I'd learned how to do or the systems I'd learned how to configure and operate. The bigger learning was about broadening my understanding of what it means to worship God. Broadening my understanding of what it is that makes community. Of finding meaning in our Christian faith and experience. I've come to believe that the question is less about whether we'll be Mary or Martha and more about how we'll come to both teach our Mary to Martha and teach our Martha to Mary. If we focus solely on the ethereal aspects of learning about faith, we'll never connect with the needs of the world. And if we focus solely on meeting those needs, we'll miss the bigger picture that comes from sitting at the feet of Jesus and drawing connections and seeing God in new ways. The one time I think it's easier, easiest to point a finger at Martha is when she points a finger at Mary. Don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to stop. But it's a little more complicated than just that. The one she accused of falling short, her sister, was focused on learning. And learning is about asking ourselves to examine how we could possibly be wrong. What assumptions do I have that need to be knocked over? What early learnings do I hold that need to be broadened to respond to new insight? Learning is humility in practice. And it's powered by the hope for growth. Martha, on the other hand, wasn't exploring how she could be wrong. She wasn't working from a place of humility. She was starting from a place of judgment, pointing out how someone else was wrong. There are certainly times when we need to call out what's wrong in the world, but if it's only for our own benefit, we should tread carefully. Martha was standing on a false precedent. She thought that she'd perfected some way of being, at least in that moment. It's like standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon, proclaiming the stunning beauty of all that we can see and calling everyone else around us to see it too, only to step back to realize that you're standing in front of a wall, looking into some facsimile of the true beauty you seek. Jesus is calling us to truer beauty than we can on our own behold. Sometimes moving toward the true precipice means focusing on tasks, on putting one foot in front of the other to reach the goal. But just as often it means living into the humility of realizing we're not there yet. That we still have many steps to take. The goal of the Christian life is not to have reached the end, to have 
attained perfection. The goal is to keep following Christ toward it. The goal is to remain humble enough to know that there is more than what we can see right now. And to trust that God sees what we're missing. That God will guide us toward that true precedent. Martha and Mary were both right in their own ways. Right is bigger than what we can capture on our own. We need the unique experiences and distinct proclivities that we each bring to any given moment if we do actually hope to grow. And we need faith in God for everything else that we've left out. The only real failure comes from believing we've already got it all figured out on our own. That we don't need anyone else. The Christian life is at least partly about seeing needs. Both our own needs and those around us. And it's also about relying on each other and the certainty of hope in Christ to respond. Amen.